In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to create a narrated slideshow. We'll be using iMovie to create one, but there are lots of apps you could use to create narrated slideshows. I personally really like the Adobe Spark video app, and if you're using a Chromebook or a laptop, then you should also take a look at the wevideo.com website. Now a narrated slideshow is a sequence of images accompanied by a voiceover narration. I really like it as a way to present information or for a student to express their understanding of a topic. You have a written script and you're adding images and voice to it. So here on screen we're going to open up the iMovie app. I'm going to tap on it. And I've already saved some images in preparation for my slideshow so let's start a new iMovie project by pressing the plus button in the corner here. And we're going to select the movie option on the left. Now this newest version of iMovie allows you to select the media for your movie here at the start of the project. I can tap on photos in the left column. I'll go to recently added and I'll find the four images that I want to use for my slideshow. So I'm just going to tap on them. And at the bottom here I'll tell it to create the movie. So the movie editor now opens and the four images have been inserted down here on the bottom on my timeline. Note also that if you've got either an older version of iMovie or even in this version if you want to add additional photos or any sort of media later on that you've got that panel up the top right there that says media. Uh, you can simply highlight any one of the uh, media types up there and then go ahead and select media from there and add it into the current spot in your timeline. Now if I want to change the order of the images, all I need to do is tap one, press and hold, and then pick it up and move it to a new, new location on the timeline. Of course, uh, if I want to look at the images, I can scrub through the timeline by simply pressing and sliding across them, or you've got the play button on top that I can use as well. Now each image has been inserted to play for a default amount of time and that's around about five seconds. In fact, if I scroll down to the end of my timeline here, you'll see at the end there that right now the total time for the video is 21.4 seconds. Now we can change the timing as needed and we'll do that after we record the narration. Okay, I have my four images on my timeline and it's time to add the narration. Now there's one point here that I can't emphasize enough and that's that you need to have a written script before recording the narration. It's important for students to organize their thoughts and it just makes a huge difference in the quality of the video. When you're ready, we move the images to the beginning of the timeline and we tap the little microphone icon on the left side of the middle toolbar. We get this little pop-up and tap the record button when we're ready to start speaking. Uh, one more point to stress here is the quality of the narration. We train students ad nauseum on how to write effectively, but we barely spend a minute talking about the skill of speech. And it is a skill. You can certainly tell the difference between narration that puts you to sleep and one that piques your interest. Okay, let's record. I'm going to keep it brief for the purposes of our demo. So I'm going to tap the record button and we'll start recording. Here we have an image of Stalin and a young Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev took over from Stalin and presided over the USSR during the early Cold War years. The image you've got here is of the wall that separated the east and west of Berlin. Lastly, we have a photo taken at the Yalta Conference. This was a meeting of Allied leaders in early 1945 as World War II was winding down. So now I'll press the stop button and accept it. And that ends the recording. Now you can see it's added an audio soundtrack underneath my images. And the first thing you should notice is that the audio soundtrack is uh, actually way longer than the amount of time the images was on screen. And you might have also noticed that the audio and the images didn't quite coordinate. So what we need to do at this point is change the timing of the images so that they actually match the audio recording. I'll just show you how to do that quickly with the last image. Uh, all we'll do is tap the image and You'll notice how it opens up uh, handles on the side of the image. I can now grab those handles and extend the amount of time that the image is on screen by simply pulling them out to match the audio. So I can extend them for as long as I want. I can change any one of those on the timeline. And that's the way I'll be able to match my images and audio. Okay, we're done. 
I'm going to tap the done button on the top left here. That's going to take me back to my main project screen where I can tap in the title, rename my movie. And I can tap the play button on the bottom toolbar to preview my movie or tap the share button and send it to a friend.